So we're here with Ronnie Heraldsvik, CMO of Spider Cloud Wireless. Um, and uh, we're having a quick chat uh, ahead of Small Cells America later this year in Dallas. Um, and Spider Cloud is, is, of course, a sponsor there, uh, which we're very happy about. Um, so, Ronnie, I think we should start this conversation in a broad term. Then. Um, and maybe you can give us your thoughts on, on a very fundamental question of really what, what is a, a small cell and what maybe isn't a small cell. Yes, uh, you know, I'll, uh, that's a you know good question and good sort of lead into the uh, really what's going on in the industry right now. And uh, you know, with the small cell summit coming up in in Dallas, um, I think the question is going to be asked again and again: What's a small cell? Uh, the good news is that you know there's a lot of attention being put on small cells in general. But what we started with was the premise of a licensed band, you know, making the big macro smaller and putting it into a, a network that actually worked indoors in homes. Now it's being you know, put into metro cells. And of course, you know, the enterprise is gonna be you know, the, the next sort of growth area. And to make it a true small cell, you, know, you need to have licensed bands. Can you have Wi-Fi in there? Great, yes, absolutely. But you know, Wi-Fi by itself doesn't make a small cell. That's, a, that's an access point that's been around for a long time. And Ronnie, Spider Cloud is, is particularly interesting because of the service that you provide. I think you're coming from a completely different angle to, to perhaps a lot of companies in this space. Um, in particular, with the bring your own device phenomenon that a lot of companies are, are observing now and, and perhaps even struggling with. Um, so, can you just you know, do a quick, quick run through of what you see, of, of what's the importance of this bring your own device BYD OD uh, uh, phenomenon that companies uh, are facing? And how do you think it will continue to grow, or, or is it at its peak? What, what are your thoughts on, on that segment? Yes, so I wonder, you know, a lot of questions in there, but the, uh, the, the premise starts with, you know, Spider Cloud is a company that is focused on selling to mobile operators. We sell, a, we actually provide a system that's scalable. that can be deployed inside of an enterprise, inside of a large venue, stadium, and so forth that can scale, just like you know, we saw the need for you know, Wi-Fi control based systems about 10 years ago, they needed to be able to scale and adhere to security and so forth. Um, the, the question also centers, centers around, you know, you know, what is the end point? If you solve the coverage and capacity problem for the mobile operator, and you also have an entry point for services into the enterprise, then you can deliver a scalable small cell system that you know, address the coverage and capacity problems for the operators, the connectivity problems for the enterprise. And more importantly, you know, hitting at that question of BYOD and device management, you know, it's an expertise that enterprises don't have. It's a responsibility that they don't necessarily want to have. And now, with a presence of a services node that controls these other radio nodes that have you know, multi-access with 3G, 3G plus Wi-Fi, and also LTE inside of them, now you can offer up device management, Wi-Fi as a service, and overall deal with the trend and the impact of BYOD as a service by a mobile operator sold into the enterprise. And I think you've already touched on this based on the service that you provide, but what do you think is then is, is the fundamental or, or what are the differences between what we would consider a traditional enterprise femto cell? Um, being deployed in an office, as opposed to this entire I think, BYOD um, managed system that Spider Cloud is, is able to deliver. Yeah, so our system is a managed services ready platform um, that is sold to the operators. And uh, you know, when you say traditional femto cell for the enterprise, um, we're so early in the introduction of femto cells into the you know the consumer space and also into the enterprise. And you know it's been so, sort of synonymous with you know one access point or one small cell. You know now we actually are getting to the point where we need bigger scalable deployments where you know enterprises that have five, six, ten thousand people you know require a scalable solution. And that's where the Spider Cloud Services node with the Ready nodes deployed as a managed services platform by a mobile operator into the enterprise. It's now getting a lot more attention. And we're also seeing you know, other vendors in the space and also the established network equipment providers you know, looking to do the same thing with a different architecture approach. With us, it's very simple. You know, whether you have 100 radio nodes or one services node, 
providing connectivity up to 10,000 people and just one system deployment, that's one connectivity back to the core. You know, unlike you know, other architecture approaches where you know, every small cell is a, con a connection back or a backhaul into the core of the network, which you know, puts a strain on the gateway, mobility, handoff, synchronization, etc. Mm, and just to build on that one, uh, the one architecture, um, some might think that you know a solution that's been out there for a while is, is DAS, um, and clearly this is an alternative to DAS, or at least it's something different that's come up now. What do you think are, is the the difference with DAS, and, and what makes this one architecture more attractive than, than a distributed antenna system? A, a, a great question. You know, we get this question a lot, especially from the investment banks that are now starting to you know follow the space want to get up to speed on what's going on. Distributed antenna systems is exactly that. It's a distributed antenna. It takes, you know, has a base station on, a, on the top of a roof, um, and you redistribute that signal throughout a building. And that's the key thing. You know, only the upper echelon of you know, big companies, either by buying it themselves or having an operator, you know, make the business case for them to install a distributed antenna system, you know, have that solution deployed. And it provides for maybe you know five bar connectivity or coverage doesn't necessarily mean you have capacity and you can't do a service delivery. Having said that though, you know, how are we different? You know, DAS is at the upper echelon, whereas we can be deployed floor by floor wherever there is a local area network. And um, that's where our business case comes to play. We're as easy as Wi-Fi to install with the benefit of a truly mobile broadband system that works over license band and also has Wi-Fi in there too as a service, then again we can be deployed floor by floor and unlike you know distributed antenna systems where you have to make the business case to take on the whole entire building or a block or explore a bigger area. And more importantly, the differentiating factor is time to market. You know, we can be deployed in four to five days for an enterprise of say up to two thousand or twenty five hundred people. Distributed antenna systems would take anywhere between nine to twelve months, just in approval, RF planning, engineering, preparation, and so forth. A DAS is established; it's been out there for a long time. We're just a cheaper, faster DAS-like solution that address what we perceive to be actually a, the sort of the unmet demand of eighty percent in between that cannot get this type of service from a mobile operator. Small temperature cells at, at the sort of residential and small enterprise, unmet 80%, then you have another maybe 10% you know, at the top, which is currently served by DAS. And once this, this system is in place, or, or once it's being put into place in a large enterprise, how does the relationship between that particular company or that enterprise change with, with the service provider? Um, or over the company putting putting uh, the service within the, uh, their campus or their, their office building? Does it fundamentally change the way they interact? Um, or is it just a straightforward change? Well, today, it's the, the relationship between an enterprise and a mobile operator you know, is primarily based on minutes and devices, you know, so either subsidized devices uh, or a preferred you know, plan. Of course, we also have the impact of BYOD, where that's just showing up in the enterprise. Now, why is BYOD taking place? It's uh, you know very often related to you know I have a device and I have better connectivity or service with a certain mobile broadband operator, and I want to bring that into my work environment, where I spend anywhere between 75 to 80 percent of my time throughout the day. How does it change when you get a reliable coverage capacity system in play? Changes everything. You know, you see other subscribers inside the enterprise gravitating towards you know, the same operator. We've seen that in some of the deployments that we currently have, where you know it's no different than you, know, you being at home and you know you have maybe an operator you know X type of relationship, and your neighbor has an operator Y relationship, and you're kind of peeking over and looking at him, going, "Wow, you know, he's got much better coverage and cooler device and better services." It's no different in the enterprise. Because frankly, whether it's enterprise or consumer, we just want it to work. And we want it to work every day, 24-7, whenever we need it. So it changes the whole dynamics because 
as soon as you have a trusted relationship between an operator and the enterprise, then you have reliable coverage and capacity. And then the operator can show up and say, we'll take care of that BYOD or device management problem for you. We'll handle the PBX integration, or we can offer up a topics-based PBX. We can offer up Wi-Fi as a service, no CapEx involvement. It changes everything. And, and Ronnie, I think you're, you're probably the most qualified person to ask this based on your experience with, with these enterprises and, and going out there and, and meeting the demands. When you go out to these large companies or, or these enterprises that are struggling with connectivity, what are their key requests to you? What, what, are, they, what are their basic needs? And what are they after from your product from the beginning? Well, what probably makes BioCloud Wireless a little bit different than you know, other players in our space is that uh, from the beginning, since we had a services node that we knew were going to be deployed inside of a 19-inch rack inside the enterprise connected to their you know, Ethernet LAN infrastructure, that we needed to have the participation of enterprise IT. We needed to make sure we adhere to security concerns, um, you know, connectivity options, being able to tie into radio server and so forth. So we, from the beginning, engaged IT uh, and making sure that this appliance, when it did show up in the enterprise, would be a welcomed addition. What are they asking for? Just make, make it work. They've been asking for that for years now. And it's not that our system can't do it, we are delivering it. They just want operators to deploy it faster. After that, it's Wi-Fi as a service. That would be great. You know, yes, we are managing our own Wi-Fi, or we are subscribing to a managed service uh, by some of the vendors. And you know, we do inherently believe that a, a 3G system is more secure and more reliable, and therefore we trust the operator. So we wouldn't mind, and that's the key thing, we wouldn't mind after they prove it works that Wi-Fi is a service. Uh, furthermore, they want to have PBX integration or cloud-based PBX. They want this whole UC infrastructure to go away because it's complex, it's costly, it takes away manpower, and frankly, they find that it doesn't work most often. So without any change to device behavior, how we interact with our, you know, overall device, whether that's a smartphone or iPad and tablet and so forth, you just want it to work without a special dial on it, or you know, when it doesn't work, you, you're, you're calling up your IT person going, why isn't my device working? And the IT director or CIO is going, well, I'm not a mobility expert. This is where the operators can shine. And Ronnie, just to bring it all to, to close, uh, SpiderCloud, uh, our, our sponsor at Small Cells America is in Dallas this December. Um, the event run by Averin Events and the Small Cell Forum. Um, and actually, SpiderCloud has helped us put together a panel with some of these enterprises um, who are coming in and talking about what their needs are and, and what, the, what the industry can do for them. So, Ronnie, for those, those of us who will be, who'll be there and, and will be in, in Dallas, what, what's going to be your key message or what is SpiderCloud's message um, to the industry and what would you like to, to get across uh, during the event? Indeed, I think, you know, we, we of course have our own objectives. Um, but, you know, in speaking to the industry and speaking to, you know, the other vendors in our space, I mean, it's very important that we all work together. Um, that's how we create an ecosystem. That's actually how we get traction in the industry. As well. Listening to the customer's customer, bringing a customer to the table, having enterprise IT tell operators direct and other vendors direct what they want and what they require. It's probably the, uh, the, the biggest objective that you know, we can you know, accomplish at this event. And uh, standing back and letting the requirements speak for themselves. And you know, we'll find out that they're actually not much different than what they were when you know, Wi-Fi became more pervasive you know, almost a decade ago. And you need to have more control, security, and scalability behind these small cell systems. So, um, you know, we think that uh, more vendors, network equipment providers will be uh, actually engaging in the same type of architecture. And that, uh, you know, the end point is not coverage and capacity. That's the beginning. The end point is help the operators have a stronger, tighter relationship with the enterprise by providing them with the reliable services, you know, clouds, media cloud, and applications in general. We call it MAX. It's mobility, application, 
cloud services. Very simple. Well, great. Well, Rami, thank you very much for your time, and uh, we look forward to hearing more about it in Dallas. Thank you all. Thanks.